الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters the 17th of Ramadan is an important day in Islamic history on this day a major victory was accomplished and this victory is known as the victory of the day of Badr. This victory has been mentioned in the Quran to highlight the importance of this important victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded early Muslims of the importance of this victory when he said وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٍ Allah has given you victory in Badr when you were weak. Also, in another verse of the Quran, this day, the victory of this day, has been referred to as يوم الفرقان the day of the criterion, meaning the day where the truth prevailed over the falsehood. So the battle of Badr was a milestone, a turning point in the history of Islam. And to talk about the specifics and the details of this victory, time would not be sufficient and I would suggest perhaps for those of you who want to know more about this particular victory to read one of the books of history Sira you may read the book of al Kafuri, which is available in Urdu in Arabic in English in Arabic, it's titled as Ar-Rahiq al maktum In English, it has been translated under the title of the Sealed Nectar. And you can also consult other books of early Islamic history, such as the Book of Muhammad by Haikal. It's also available in English and Arabic, and so on and so forth. But in my short reminder today, what I would like to focus on is a high-level overview of the victory of Badr and how significant it was and what it meant to Muslims. The Battle of Badr took on the 17th of Ramadan in the second year of Hijrah meaning two years after the migration of the Prophet, may the peace and the blessing of Allah be upon him from Mecca to Medina. 
Now, the question that historians talk and discuss when they talk about this particular battle is what was the trigger? What was the cause of this battle? And generally they mention a caravan that was coming back to Mecca from the north and the people of Mecca were traders and their caravans would go to the north and to the south. So they mention that what led to this battle was that caravan which was coming from the north and, and an attempt of, by Muslims to in, intercept that caravan led to the Battle of Badr. But this might be a secondary reason. The main reason for the Battle of Badr did not start, or the cause did not start, with the caravan. The cause of the Battle of Badr goes back way more than a decade, way back to more than a decade. The cause of Battle of Badr began from the day the Prophet wasallam made a declaration to the people of Mecca and announced to them that he was a Prophet of Allah and called upon them to follow the revelation, the message that was sent to them. From that moment, the Meccans declared war on the Prophet and on Islam, and throughout the years they have been taking, taking one measure after another to eliminate Islam and to stop the progress of Islam. So the Battle of Badr was not an isolated incident. The Battle of Badr was part of a series of attempts by the Meccan aristocracy to end the spread of Islam and to stop Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam from conveying the message that was revealed to him. So the essence and the real cause of the Battle of Badr was not the caravan, rather it was that declaration or that determination that was made by the Meccans from day one when they decided to fight Islam at every stage. Accordingly, throughout the history of Islam from the day the Prophet Sallallahu declared his message, Meccans tried everything. They tried uh, persecution, they tried torture, they tried boycott, they tried banishment, they tried everything. And Battle of Badr was not an exception but a continuation of that long effort or that long attempt to undermine Islam and Muslims. Secondly, my dear brothers and sisters, the Battle of Badr, those who participated in that battle were different in terms of who they were, uh, in terms of the location, in terms of the numbers, but in essence and substance they were the same two groups that throughout history have been struggling. And these two groups were at the time of Musa, they were at the time of Noah, they were at the time of Prophet Jesus, and these two groups were on the one side the persecutors, and on the, on the other side the persecuted. On the other side were the powerful, the masters, the rich, and on the other side were the poor and the downtrodden and the disadvantaged. On the one side were those who were saying, we want to freely worship our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the opposite side, there was those who wanted to prevent people from making a free choice, to follow their conscience, to worship their one Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these two camps have been 
struggling for centuries between those who wanted to force their own beliefs and their own power upon other people and those who were opposing that. So these two camps, we see them again here in the Battle of Badr. On the one side, the Prophet ﷺ and his companions who were standing for the right to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other camp, the Meccan aristocrats, the Meccan powerful elite who were trying to prevent them from exercising this right. On the Meccan side was the master of Bilal, the master of Bilal who was torturing him. On the, on the Muslim side was Bilal, the slave. On the Meccan side was Abu Jahl, the rich and the powerful man in Mecca who tortured the mother and the father of Yasser and Yasser was on the other side on the Muslim camp. So two camps, my dear brothers and sisters, one camp fighting for the right to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freely. On the other side, a camp that was trying to prevent, to, pre to preventing them from exercising that right. And these two camps have been in this long struggle, a struggle that began from early time in history, from the time of Nuh to the time of Ibrahim, to the time of Musa, to the time of Isa, to the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thirdly, my dear brothers and sisters, these two camps, their objectives, their goals were completely different. And we can see that perhaps in the statement that was made by one of the leaders of the Meccan camp known as Abu Jahl. The caravan they came to rescue, they received the news that it managed to escape safely. So there was some discussion among them that let's go back. But Abu Jahl was adamant saying no. Nope. We will continue marching until we will reach Badr. Badr was about 70 miles from Medina. And in justifying his position, he said, Wallahi lanna uda hatta narida badran. We will not return until we reach Badr. Fanuqimu fiha thalathan. And we stay there for three days. Fananhar al jazur. We will slaughter camels. Wa nut'imu al ta'am. We will feed people. Wa nasqi al khamr. And we will give people free drinks, free alcohol. وَتَعْزِفُ عَلَيْنَا الْقِيَانِ And we will let our musicians, you know, make music and dance and so on. حَتَّى تَسْمَعَ الْعَرَبُ بِمَسِيرِنَا وَقُوَّتِنَا فَيَهَابُونَ أَبَدَ الدَّارِ So that everybody in Arabia will know how powerful we are, how prestigious we are, and they will forever, you know, glorify us and, and respect us. So it was an exercise of showing the power, the might and the glory of the Meccans. That was the sentiment on the Meccan side. But on the Muslim side, the sentiment you would see it on the how the Prophet ﷺ was conducting himself. Historians mention that the Prophet was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with great degree of humility and saying, Oh Allah, if this small group disappears, then you may not be, be, be worshipped on land again. So this small group was defending the right of people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freely. So two different camps with two different objectives. And here now, thirdly, begins, begins the 
confrontation and the engagement. And anybody who would look at these two camps would come to the conclusion or might say that the outcome is, is a foregone conclusion. Because number-wise, the ratio was 3 to 1. Muslims were around 300 and the Meccans were about close to 1,000. So 3 to 1 ratio. And not only that, the Meccans were well supplied, well armed, they, 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 they had everything they needed. Muslims were in a very difficult situation. As the Quranic verse described them, they were weak. They were smaller in number, they did not have enough supplies, uh, and they, they, they just had, it's only two years since they have migrated from Medina. So materially speaking, they were in a much inferior positions. But they had an advantage over Meccans. They had a very high morale. And they had a unique leader whom they loved, a leader whom they passionately followed. The Meccans lacked that, that sense of purpose, that sense of, 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 of fighting for a cause. And here you have the battle going on. And to the surprise of everyone, this small group of believers came out victorious and the Meccans lost the battle completely. And what was more surprising is the fact that some of the top leadership of Mecca, the top aristocrats of Mecca who were in the battlefield, they, all, of the, all of them, or a good number of them, perished and disappeared, including Abu Jahl, including Umayyat ibn Khalaf, the man who was uh, the master of Bilal, and many, many others. It was a devastating defeat for Meccans. Abu Jahl thought that by going to Badr, this will increase the stature of Meccan aristocracy and, 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 and increase their power and their might, but this was a humiliating defeat for them. And this was a turning point in the history of Islam. From this moment, it was clear that Muslims will not be on the receiving end. They will be able to stand for their right. They will be able to defend their land and their, their faith and, and, and their religion. Further, my dear brothers and sisters, the Battle of Badr tells us something about the approach that the Prophet ﷺ took in dealing with the challenges he was facing in Arabia. Arabia was a dangerous place, a place full of tribalism, bloodshed. The poor, the, the, the strong would kill the poor and the, the strong would take advantage of, of the weak. So it was a society that was very, very dangerous. The Prophet wasallam never liked war. The Prophet always sought peaceful alternatives. And he spent 13 years, most of the life of the Prophet wasallam 13 years, and peacefully calling the people of Mecca to Islam, never resorted to force, never resorted to, to violence, peacefully calling the people of Mecca. They were torturing him, they were torturing his companions, they were uh, imposing all kinds of difficulties and hardship, but the Prophet continuously kept preaching peacefully, by peace, uh, peacefully, and with patience and with perseverance. Then Mecca became a difficult place to live. And even the life of the Prophet Sallallahu was in danger. So they migrated to Medina. But migration to Medina did not end, even though they were no, now in a better place where they can freely pray, where they can freely worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But the Meccans were still after them. First of all, they have stolen all their properties. When they left, they left empty-handed. Meccans confiscated everything they left. And not only that, there were many believers whom 
they refused to let them leave. Some of the companions left, leaving behind their wives and their children. So there were still Muslims who were prevented from migrating to Medina. Further to that, Meccans were looking for ways to reach to Muslims in Medina and somehow cause them harm and hardship. So it was a matter of time that a confrontation would take place between the Meccans and, and the Medinians. And here the Quranic verse came to give permission to Muslims to carry arms to defend themselves when they were in Medina. And the verse clearly states the objective أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمُ الظُّلِمُ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ The verse says that permission is given. Permission is given meaning to defend themselves. Permission is given to whom? Those who war is imposed on them or those who were wrong, those who were uh, the subject of injustice. الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُ رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Those who were driven out of their homes for no justifiable reason other than saying Allah is our Lord. So the reason that Allah, permission was given to this evolving new Medinian society is to defend their faith, to defend uh, those who were persecuted, it was not for aggressive purposes. It was not for reasons that other engage in, 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 in fighting. And the Prophet Sallallahu clearly told in the Quran, was told in the Quran, وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Do not transgress, do not be aggressors. Allah does not like those who transgress. Further, Prophet was told, وَإِنْ جَنَحُوا لِسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا If they lean to peace, if they accept peace, then lean and accept peace. So this was the philosophy of the Prophet Sallallahu and the philosophy of Islam is to seek peaceful alternatives, but at the same time also be ready to defend the right and to defend the weak and to defend those who are persecuted. The victory of Badr, my dear brothers and sisters, was a turning point in the history of Islam. From this moment on, people recognize Muslim or this evolving uh, community in Medina as a, a f an important force in Arabia. And this gave Muslims an opportunity to stand for their right and to defend those who had no defense. Of course, the Battle of Badr created also more challenges because the Meccans, since they lost this battle, they were even more determined to take the revenge. And there were also other parties who did not like that victory and they were study started communicating with Meccans to establish some kind of coalition. So my dear brothers and sisters, to summarize, this important historic event was a struggle between the forces of oppression and the forces that were struggling to secure their freedom, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, between forces that was using brute force and forces that were calling for the cause of Allah by peaceful and logical manners. History definitely was made on this day and that's why historians uh, have been very particular on identifying anyone who uh, participated in this battle and labeling them as Badri. If you look through the books of Hadith or history, they would always say so and so. He is a Badri, meaning he participated in Badr. Participating in Badr became 
a title of honor because this was a difficult time and a challenging moment. And the victories that came later were the outcome of the victory of the day of Badr. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we go through the days of Ramadan, let's remember the sacrifices made by our beloved messenger and the companions, and let's read our history and make some reflections and understand the essence and the substance of the message of Islam and the struggles that the early generation of Muslims have gone through. Thank you very much for listening. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.